song that was played when you were coming out? Yes, I You've did. heard Bob any Marley. of those songs? Yes, my mom in the kitchen every morning before school. <laughs> literally, literally. Does she love Bob Marley just as much as I do? Yeah, I love so her. I was named after Bob Marley I... because my mom is from Jamaica. So to bring back in the roots of my family, who I don't always get to see, and yeah. coming into living in New Jersey, I experienced that. What's your name. favorite Bob Marley song? Well... My favorite Bob Marley song, it's kind of like a tie because, you know, One Love is like, it's the yes. song. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I also do like, like, um, I Shot the Sheriff, which is not like the best song, but you, you love it too. You know, you just have to love it. Yes, you so. just do. I love you. Yes, and we know you love music. You love Bob Marley. You also love reading and books. And yes. Tell us about this big campaign and how it started. So the 1,000 Black Girl Books campaign is a social media campaign started by me in November of 2015. So in my fifth grade class, I wasn't seeing black girl stories being reflected, and it wasn't something that we were told, but I could see that story in my home and in the books that my parents gave me. Right. I knew that like kids at my school, they might not always be able to see themselves as characters that are important and things that are valued in their school system. So I decided to collect 1,000 books where black girls are the main characters, and I was able to collect to date, uh, 9,500 right. books. And, uh, wow. 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 Okay. And, and you're writing a book, too. Yes, yeah, so my book, Marley Dies Gets It Done, and So Can You, is a guide for kids my age and older to be able to use their gifts and talents and the things that they enjoy doing to help their community and to make the world a better place like I did in their own unique ways. Oh. Hmm. I don't know. How, how, is, how are you 12 years old? Oh. If I knew, I would tell when's you. Your, when's your birthday? Uh, January. You're yeah. January. And you turned 30 in January. Yeah. <laughs> Very I, smart. I want to know why you fell in love with reading in the first place and why you think it's so important for kids your age to read. Well, I feel like reading is something that's fun, but also the biggest mistake is that it's used as a punishment. And people say, sometimes I hear parents say, go to your room and read or get off your phone and read. And that puts a negative connotation to something that can help you a lot. So we have, like, reading gives you words. So in a sense, you might be able to get in a fight about something like, oh, I don't like this camera angle or whatever. You want to say it to a producer or something. Yeah. And then, and then <laughs> you are able, through the books that you read and through the things that you, like, get to enjoy through novels and whatever you like to read, you sure. are able to express those feelings in a more clear and articulate way. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Hey, have you, wait a minute. Have you, have you, I thought my kids were going to get it when I got home. They're really going to get it now. I'm like, what are y'all doing? Y'all not doing nothing. Sorry, I know that was improper grammar. Yeah. What, uh, what were all of us doing at 12? Oh, I, feel like, I feel like the worst mother ever right now. Like, what am I doing wrong? It's not like that. But I want a daughter like you. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. Okay, so now you're like on doing talk shows, you're on cover magazines, you're like on this speaking circuit. Did you ever think when you started the hashtag it was going to be this big? Well, no, actually, because towards like the our deadline from November was to February when we yeah. were going to go back to my mom's home uh, town in Jamaica. And I had only collected 200 books. And I was like, there's no way in the world I'm going to get this done. There's no way this is possible. Right. But through social media, which is the thing I get to talk about tomorrow at the Social Innovation Summit, <laughs> I've been able to use like <laughs> the things that I enjoy, the things I use to help other people. Right. You realize you could run for office right now and everyone's going <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Do you have a favorite book of all time? Well, that's a tough question because I, I get new books all the time, but I'd say like, my two all-time, because I can't pick one, is Brown Girl Dreaming by Jacqueline Woodson. It's a memoir of her life written in verse, and it's really good, and it's one of the first books I ever, like, didn't understand, and I was really frustrated because I didn't, I was like, I don't understand what poetry means, this word, this word, okay. and then I was able to grow and learn and connect with her story a lot. Then also there's One Crazy Summer by Rita Williams Garcia. It's a children's book that is now used instead of Hatchet and instead of the Shiloh series and Old Yeller as the fourth grade book that kids get to read. Mm. My school, yeah. Impressed. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. Really I know, we want to keep you, but we're out of time. <laughs> what am I like, seriously, I could cry right now. Um, for more information on how to be a part of the hashtag 1000 Black Girl Book Movement, uh, it's all on WindyCityLive.com.